We are live from the Jump Television Studios in sunny San Diego, California, and Biz Brew on the air. U2 America, U2America.com is their website. You can follow us on Twitter at Sully on the air. The new Biz Brew website coming up here next week. There's Rusty Nails over there. Hey, Russ. What? What have I done now? I just came in for a beer, and now we're talking business. Hey, you know when you? I just have to say, now that you moved into your sumptuous residence, mm -hmm. which I was at yesterday, by the way, uh -huh. enjoying Bloody Marys and a, and a little bit of a charm. That was game. good. That uh, Ballast Point vodka I with the uh, hot habanero. Peppers. <laughs> I was just going to say, so Ballast Point got acquired by Constellation Brands, yeah. a small uh, brewery here in San Diego, for a billion dollars. And I went to, yeah, one billion. Drink so I up. went over to Russ's house yesterday. Of course, I had to bring adult beverages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, can't get in without them. You can't. So I walk in there with Bloody Mary mix, a little Worcestershire sauce, a couple of limes, and a bottle of this habanero flavored vodka. Yeah, yeah. And I had no, it was Ballast yeah. Point, fantastic stuff. So I drank stuff. them all the way to the end of the game. Yeah, very, very quickly. Huge month coming up here. We got, we're chock full of big financial news here. Uh, and I'm going to go quickly because I want to get to our guests. And I will talk about this more later in the show. Big jobs report on, fri on Friday. This is the last economic checkup before the Fed meets to determine where they're going to interest rate hike. And that's the other big piece of information because the jobs report Friday has a very special meaning. Outside of a horrible jobs report, we're going to see interest rates increase by maybe a couple of basis points. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. Hey, look who's in studio today. The guys from, uh, well, I shouldn't say the guys, the guys, the, the brain. Guy. The Rod guy. Turner. Rod Turner in yeah. town from Manhattan Street Capital. Uh, of course, he's become our expert on if you are a company, whether you're, uh, whether you're privately held, you want to stay private or go public. Rod has come in with the latest on the Jobs Act and what's called Reg A+. Rod, great to have you in BizBrew today. Great to be here. Thank How you. are you, sir? Excellent. So. That um, piggyback the Jobs Act or something? What did you just say? Yeah, there? you know, I th we should start with that because because yeah. I, I don't. Well, that so the the Reg A plus is a way you can finance a company mm -hmm. and take it public or raise money. There's a lot of there's a lot of nuances that Rod's gonna I'll let Rod because he's the expert. But before that, let's talk about the Jobs Act. How does that all relate to the Jobs Act? So the Jobs Act freed up a couple of things to do with IPOs, made a small improvement there, mm -hmm. and then essentially opened up. Uh, internet platforms to raise capital for startup companies in Title II, mm -hmm. which was for accredited investors only, wealthy investors only. And we'll talk about what those are yeah. in just a second. Yeah. Okay, so, so, but the Jobs Act, I'm so, I don't know how, how do they intersect? You do a Jobs Act, they throw a couple of sidecar bills in there to get this stuff through? Because I don't know where the intersection of financing company. Yeah. That or, was or maybe it's because they can create more jobs if they have more money? Yes, okay. that's it. That was kind of the, the way to sell it in mm -hmm. a way uh -huh. through, through Congress. At the time, there was a lot of reluctance. There was a lot of fear of corruption. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I think that was kind of a good move at the time to help it get pitched and yeah. successfully <laughs> accepted. So the Jobs Act was mostly about uh, opening up financing for startup companies. Yep. Yeah. And the, the SEC delivered it very slowly, mm -hmm. but has accelerated in the last 12 months pretty significantly. Okay, so what are the big changes? Because I know some of those changes have to do with marketing, because you can't just go out because of the, uh, you know, the, the Great Depression of the, th of the 20s. You can't go out and say, hey, I've got the blue shirt that's going to cure cancer. Just buy a share of my company. Yeah. You can't yeah, do that. That's right. Since the 30s. They used to be able to do that, however. Yes, yeah, oh, prior right. to the 30s, they could. So since the 30s until now, uh, really, up until now, you haven't been able to sell shares in a private company to normal Main Street investors, to people okay. that are not already wealthy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, accredited wealthy investors have had that latitude because it's been assumed because they're wealthy, they have money to lose, yeah, yeah, effectively. Yeah. So now, with Title III of the, of the Jobs Act, which allows crowdfunding of up to a million dollars per company, that goes effective, the, the law, the regulations have been published, it goes effective in May of next year, that's okay. when it gets to okay. go real. Startup companies can raise seed money, you know, up to 200,000 with very limited uh, reporting requirements. And as the amount of money raises, they have to report more. Title II is for accredited investors only, and that's been around since September of 2013. Okay. And it's, they, they raised $1.6 billion in 2014, which is pretty impressive from right. zero the prior year, or about zero, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and Reg A+, Plus, which was announced in March of this year and went effective at the end of June this year, it's... <clears throat> It's really very, very good. Part of what you said, though, is the marketing of this, the crowdfunding of this. Yes. That is a big change. Yes. Because because before, if you had an investment banker come up and say, let's say Russ wanted to create his tequila factory, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. There's a, plenty of disclosure, but you could only take it to a certain type of investor. Accredited investors. Accredited investors, investors oh, but yeah. you also couldn't just go on TV and put a commercial no, on the Super Bowl and say, not. hey, we're raising money for tequila. Right. 
you can sort of you can't you can, do you, that, but you can sort of market it now. Though. Yeah, you can, and you, if you had enough money, you could even do that today. Yeah, really, you, you could advertise. It, it, it would cost you too much. Yeah, to do right. It, but you could. <laughs> yeah. So it's if you look at it now in terms of disclosure, uh, in terms of marketing capability, mm -hmm. Title Three that is less than a million dollars to Main Street investors and accredited, but mm -hmm. mostly it'll be uh, Main Street investors. Okay. Mm -hmm. In that case, they're only allowed to market themselves on the platform which they're on. So within that constraint, they can market themselves. Okay, talk about that. With the platform they're on, what does that so mean? So if they're that? raising money um, on one of the uh, equity crowdfunding sites, mm -hmm. they haven't announced themselves yet, but they'll be announcing by over the next few months, then within that environment, Okay, within that crowdfunding themselves. environment. That's kind of restrictive, okay. and frankly, I hope the SEC is going to remove that restriction. Okay. So is this different than like, uh, I, you know, I get a bunch of friends together, each give me uh, you know five fifty thousand dollars or whatever it is well but mm -hmm. by the way if you did that before without disclosing uh -oh. and somebody got upset at you mm -hmm. it, you, yeah, you yeah. not only would be in trouble civilly you could potentially be in trouble For criminally criminal, yeah. regardless of, it's, it's like a speeding ticket I didn't know I was going 80 it doesn't matter you're still getting a ticket mm -hmm. you could have been held liably criminally because you didn't move the proper disclosure. That's, yes. Now that hasn't completely gone away, oh, but no. a big hurdle has gone away, yeah, whereby family and friends and what they call a super angel round, nice. and all the angel and family and friends investors, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah. Okay, speaking of investors, before hmm. we let you out of here today, uh, um, and I, we got a little bit of time here, I wanna talk about the difference between a Main Street investor and an accredited investor. Because mm -hmm. many people, uh, you know, are, are saying, well, hey, I, I want to get involved in, in yeah. you know, this, the latest thing. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I, I don't think I'm an accredited investor. I'm not, right. you know, I've never been to school for investing. Well, that's yeah. not really what it means, though. No, it doesn't have anything to do with your ability to be selective, <laughs> to particularly choose winners. It's all about wealth. Yeah. So somebody is an accredited investor if they make more than 200K a year on their own or 300K with mm -hmm. their spouse and have a net worth of more than a million dollars excluding their home. So it's wealthy people. Okay, so yeah, so without your house, if you got a million bucks, either you know, in cash, a business, stocks, bonds, whatever, yep. you're considered an accredited investor just by nature of the number. Yes. Not, not of the experience. No, is that is there not. still a perk for being in that club? Well, yeah, I mean, listen. You, well, you get lots of options. You, you can invest options. in hedge funds, you can invest oh, in really? other okay. sophisticated instruments right. that mainstream investors aren't Do you about. consider it a, a, a detractor that people can invest just because they're wealthy and not because they have experience? Well, not really. I mean, no? it's, it's, it's already the game, you know? It's okay. already the situation in place. Yeah. So it's nothing different. Yeah, because it's assumed that, I, I actually feel that it's a great thing that Main Street mm -hmm. investors are now allowed to invest because there's a lot of smart people out there yeah. that want to help, they want to support companies, they believe yeah. in teams, they believe in products they want to see on the market, yeah. and they want to make money on them too. And today, in today's world, it's very difficult to make a decent return anywhere, really. Next time you're on the air, uh, uh, we want to talk about how to go about making sure that, that equity and crowdfunding uh, is, is successful. I want to talk about the success of you, because there's a lot of companies that watch us here, and I, th I think it's smart that we talk about it. Also, uh, you know, how much less expensive this is, because a big piece of this yes. is that it's way cheaper to go public now than it used to be, and we'll discuss that next time he's on the air. He'll be on with us next time. Rod, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank His you. name is Rod Turner, Manhattan Street Capital, ManhattanStreetCapital.com, and we'll put, put that out on our Twitter feed, our Twitter, at Sully on the Air, at BizBrew, and at Rusty Nails. Also, that. you can go to u2america.com there'll mm -hmm. be a link there for us thank you bud i appreciate that rod coming up rusty you can pick my shorts nah i can you want to do something else sure no all right it. i russ, think it's good russ's triangle of adventure oh that's another good on one. biz brew u2america u2america.com stand by we're back in a second or both <laughs>